I'm so excited about my next guest. She is a secret coach, best-selling author of True Grit and Grace. She's also a podcast host, Amberly Lago. She will share how she overcame tragedy, changed her mindset, and is now encouraging others to do the same through her work. Welcome to the show, Amberly. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. This is a dream come true to get to be here with you. I've admired what you do and um, you. yes, everything you do. So thank you for having me. Oh, this is so fantastic. And your story is just so harrowing and you are amazing. So, mm -hmm. and my, my story and my show and all of my guests, it's about sharing triumphant stories and you definitely have one and your life changed in an instant. Mm -hmm. You were hit by a motorcycle and you almost lost your leg. And for a lot, they might have lost their leg, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. So can you share with us about your tragedy and how it affected you not only physically, but also mentally? Yes. Well, thank you for asking. Yeah. I mean, in the blink of an eye, everything did change. I was in the fitness industry. I'd been coaching for 26 years. Um, fitness was my life. I was sponsored by Nike. I was doing infomercials and this will mm -hmm. kind of date me, but I was doing infomercials with body by Jake. Oh yeah. And yeah, you remember it. He's awesome. Oh, and yeah. Coming home from work, I was on my motorcycle cruising down Ventura and I had an SUV just punch it out of a parking lot. And I saw it coming and I thought, surely he sees me. And I'm like, apparently not. It was too late. I tried to jump off my motorcycle, um, but I got T-boned, thrown 30 feet. Um, and I remember just sliding down the asphalt thinking, please don't let another car hit me because it was yeah. a, a busy street. And when, when I came to a stop, I only looked down at my leg once mm. and to look down and see, you know, my leg was completely crumbled. There was blood everywhere. And I, um, I kind of thought, wow, this can't be good. I might have to train clients on crutches for a while. I had no idea that this was how this was going to change my life. I was rushed to the hospital, put an induced coma. Um, because my organs were shutting down, they couldn't control the pain. Um, my femoral yeah. artery was severed. So I'd lost so much blood that I was mm. basically dying. And um, when I woke up out of a coma, they said, you have a 1% chance of saving your leg. This is basically a war wound. We're going to have to amputate. And all I heard in that moment was you have a 1% chance. And I was like, then there's still a chance. So I yeah. need to find a doctor who's willing to take that chance with me. And by the grace of God, we took, um, well, it took a lot of phone calls, a lot of prayer, yeah. um, yeah. Uh, and a lot of grit. And we found a doctor got transferred and, uh, surgery after surgery, 34 in total, they were able oh to God. save my leg. And, you know, a lot of, um, you listening might be saying, well, I can't relate. I've never been hit by an SUV, but I think that we have all felt like, especially in the past couple of years that we've been hit by something, whether it's mm -hmm. our finances or our health. And I know for me, we had $2.9 million worth of medical expenses. Um, oh they saved my leg, but I was diagnosed with a nerve disease called CRPS, which leaves me in a lot of pain. And so I really had to kind of reinvent what I did, I had to learn to love myself again yeah. and um, come up with tools to get through some of the challenges um, that I still have today. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about, I mean, first of all, to live in pain, the idea of trying to fight back, no matter like you were talking about, no matter what this life altering thing that has happened, you have to fight back and fight, find that courage to do that and where where did you find that grit and and also dealing with depression and mm -hmm. you know PTSD and all the things that come with this where where do you think you found that strength or how could others possibly find that strength um that's such a good question um you know I 
I did spiral down into a depression. And I think when it really started to sink in, and this might sound shallow, but you know, my whole life I had, I was a professional dancer and then yeah. did fitness modeling. And, and so I depended on my physicality to, for, for my income, I was the main breadwinner of the family. And I depended on, you know, my nickname at the gym was legs yeah. and, to now, I remember there was one night in the hospital and I was looking down at my leg that was held together with these rods and, um, completely just from the hip down. I mean, I had road rash on my back and, but to look at my leg and the uncertainty of, will I ever walk again? Is tomorrow going to be the day they amputate it? And then this infomercial came on and there was this beautiful lady in her bikini running across the beach with her family. And I started those what if questions? What if my husband doesn't love me? What if I die tomorrow? Like it just got worse yeah. and worse and worse, the yeah. what ifs. And then I had to stop and say, I've got a choice here. And we all have a choice. We can go down that road of despair and we can stay there or we can decide we are going to get up. And how I started to shift my mental, like how I was thinking mm -hmm. was with, with gratitude. I remember in that moment, I had this little notepad and I still have that notepad saved that. And I started writing down everything that I was grateful for, um, yeah. from the nurses that came in from the doctors, from my family that I had a view from, you know, I, I was in the yeah. hospital and stuck in there and I hadn't been outside in weeks, but I could see the blue sky, um, yeah. during the day that I had people taking care of me, all the things I was grateful for that I was alive, that I had breath, even though I was stuck in that hospital bed, I right. could move my upper body. I had my mind. And when I started to do that, I started to to really notice how it shifted my thinking from instead of focusing on what I couldn't do on yeah. what I could do and on what I didn't have into it focused me on thinking about all the things that I did have. And it was alchemy. And to this day, I still start my day off with gratitude, but I think one of the things that really helped was I had to believe in something bigger than me because yeah. Yes, it was hard um, in the hospital. I mean, it was hard. I remember gripping yeah. the sides of the, the bed when they would come in to change the bandages. Mm -hmm. And um, those times were hard. But when what was really hard, Marcy, was when I was out of the hospital and I was diagnosed with this nerve disease. And the doctor yeah. said that there's no cure, that I needed mm -hmm. to stay in my wheelchair, that I'd never work again or walk again. And living with that constant pain, I, I did spiral down. And I think what helped was when I reached out for help. So I had to yeah. take radical acceptance of, okay, well, these are the cards that I have been dealt. Yeah, It's up to me to choose how I'm going to play the heck out of them. And so yeah. I started uh, getting very isolated in my pain. I didn't want people to know that I was hurting. I didn't want to, mm. I didn't want people to see my scars. Yeah. I, uh, started drinking every day to try to cope with the pain because mm -hmm. I was on 73 homeopathic pills and 11 different prescription medications and nothing was working. And, um, alcohol worked until it didn't. And yeah. what saved my life was when I reached out and asked somebody for help. I knew a client of mine that was sober. Um, first, I got on my knees and I prayed and I prayed yeah. to God. I said, please, I need help. I thought about my daughters and I thought, I want to be an example of resilience for them. I want to be the victor of my life and not the victim. So I think any sort of transformation really starts with radical acceptance and awareness of where you are in your journey. And mm -hmm. then how can you take an action step? I am just so enamored with you and all that you have done and continue mm -hmm. to do. So can you tell us uh, where, unfortunately, we're out of time, where we can find your book and you and what you're doing today? Because if you haven't gotten motivated from, from these eight minutes, uh, there's so much more that that you could get from you so please tell us where we can find you oh thank you um amberlylago.com 
And I would love to give your amazing listeners a gift, like how I tap into my resilience, which is if they just text the word grit, G R I T to Mm -hmm. 214, 818-214-7378. They'll get that free playbook that will teach you how to tap into your resilience. And that's actually me texting. So sometimes it takes me a couple of days to get back, but I love hearing from people. Um, So yeah, uh, or Instagram at Amberly Lago Motivation is where I kind of hang out the most. And that's where I watch all your videos. Yes. And you have so much motivation on Instagram. So fun to, to follow you. So thank you again, Amberly, and just keep doing the amazing work you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.